Hi, I'm Judith and I'm a foraging teacher. I moved to Edinburgh about 10 years ago from Germany, from the Schwarzwald. Foraging in Edinburgh is really, really nice because we can forage year round. And each season brings different things to us. So right now is early spring. And the little changes that we're noticing now are the green and the pink shoots coming out of the dark earth and the sap rising in the trees. The days are getting longer, so the plants are starting to grow faster. There's more variety of things. The birds are singing, the sun is getting a little bit warmer. It's really a lovely time. I think foraging in general has a lot to do with gratitude with noticing what's close by, with being joyful about what's close by. And it's so different from grocery shopping. Foraged food is the most seasonal and the most local food you can possibly get. And it's good for us to eat. And it's also good for the environment. Better than buying stuff that's wrapped in plastic with millions of food miles on them, grown with pesticides and fertilizers. This is the food we're meant to eat. This is the food humans grew up eating, foraged food. What grows around us, what grows during this season. When people first start foraging, people must familiarize themselves and only eat what they know. You can't go out and just eat a mushroom because there's a mushroom. Uh, that's not safe. So dead elderwood is the perfect place to find auricularia, um, jelly ear, wood ear mushrooms. And these are really dried up because we had dry weather, but they will rehydrate beautifully. Some of the flavors that we find in nature are so surprising. For example, the young shoots on uh, brambles right now taste a bit like coconut. So do gorse flowers. You can capture that flavor in a cordial or in a wine. I'm really fond of all those foraged flavors and I'm really keen on them uh, not being lost and not being forgotten and maybe getting a little bit more popularized again. So I think my mission is to bring them back into our kitchens and to bring them back into our conversation. Another thing to be aware of when you're foraging is to involve all your senses. You can't just go by sight. You can't just say this looks similar to this. You really also have to know what it feels like, what it smells like, what it tastes like, and the kind of environment in which it grows. So foraging has to involve all your senses. It's not just a visual thing. And because it involves all your senses, and because it's so important to observe all the details, it's a really good exercise in mindfulness as well. It slows you down. It focuses you on one single thing, one little detail. It really, really centers you and anchors you. Foraging ties you to a certain place and to a certain time. And when you're eating wild food, it does that even more because you're eating the landscape. You're taking it inside yourself and that way you're becoming part of it. I think people that get worried about foraging impacting the environment forget that, that we are a part of the environment, we are a part of nature. So when we're foraging, we're not hurting nature, we're just becoming a part of it, like we're supposed to. This is what we are as humans.